Oh, the passion of Anna. What am I going to do with you? This is a rare film that totally flummoxed me as to how I should respond. I don't like it. I don't dislike it. It's unfocused and not very substantial, but it's not a bad movie either. Let me try to clarify my largely unimpressed thoughts on this film. Max von Sydow stars as Andreas Finkelmann, a recluse who is content to live alone in the woods until he starts mingling with the neighbors. He has an affair with the sweet Ava, Bibby Anderson, and also starts a relationship with Anna, Liv Ullman, a widow who views truth as the highest possible priority. But their traumatic pasts and natural discontent eventually poison Andreas and Anna's bond. The quickest, simplest way I could describe this film is that it has good elements that aren't executed well. Let me show you what I mean. At many points in the film, the passion of Anna defies the show-don't-tell rule in storytelling. As the characters talk about their pasts and inner thoughts, with Anna recalling the car accident that left her a childless widow, Ava recounting the medical accident that made her miscarriage, and Andreas imploring about how he wants to be free again, this large amount of dialogue-based exposition is still riveting because of the actor's unflinching conviction. The performances are strong, as always, and von Sydow and Ullman are completely believable as they convey the extreme cynicism and mounting dissatisfaction of their characters. But powerful delivery only goes so far, and the characters speaking about themselves feels just like that, speeches. Too much exposition is a problem I've had with quite a few of Bergman's films, and telling us so much about the characters through monologue and narration, but revealing relatively little through action, ironically limits how well we can know and care about the characters. Here's where Show Don't Tell is restored. I think it is nearly always better to share in a character's experiences, as observing and feeling the events in their lives allows for a closer, deeper connection with them, as I explained in my Rage review. Again, the performances in The Passion of Anna are staggering, but the sheer amount of exposition makes the characterization feel too clinical and distant. Don Drucker of the Chicago Reader rightly pointed out that with its loose plot, The Passion of Anna is more a depiction of life than of drama. And I respect that. But the main aspect of life that it focuses on is not that interesting to me. Probably my favorite scene in the film has Ava visit Andreas, whereupon she opens up to him and they eventually have sex. I love this scene partly because of its charming dialogue and interactions, its rich color palette and evocative use of shadows, but also its interesting ethics. Though Ava and Andreas are both committing adultery, as even before they have sex, confiding in someone other than your partner is widely regarded as a form of cheating, this scene is still touching, as Andreas can love her openly and warmly, unlike her husband Ellis, who no longer shows her any affection and seems to have tired of her. This is the best part of the film, yet it's soon dropped and nothing comes of it. For a moment, it appears that, in photographing Andreas for his picture vault, the suspicious Ellis is documenting Andreas to get back at him later, but this doesn't lead anywhere either. Another engaging subplot concerns a series of acts of animal cruelty on the island. Andreas rescues a puppy who was nearly hanged by an unknown man, several cattle are brutally slaughtered, and a barn is set ablaze with livestock inside. This subplot has a confronting and very sad culmination, as a family friend of Andreas is wrongfully accused, brutally beaten, and driven to suicide, only for the real culprit to strike again, and I took these crimes against animals to be a more blatant expression of the discontent and resentment beneath the surface of everyone in the film. But these intriguing plot threads overshadow the main plot thread of Andreas and Anna. There is little passion between them, but they are content enough together for a while. However, you know early on that their relationship is doomed to fail because Andreas can't escape his past of petty crime and a failed marriage, or his desire for solitude, and the smokescreen of happiness they are living by offends Anna's need for truth, and there is also her own lies about her past. I understand what Bergman was going for with this, and it works to a fair degree, but there are two problems with it. First of all, the dying relationship in The Passion of Anna doesn't have anywhere near the tragic, gripping impact of the dying relationship in The Shame, which has a very passionate, loving relationship becoming corrupted by war, and hence has further for its characters to fall. The Shame, which I recently decided is my favorite Bergman film, and was released a year before The Passion of Anna, is thus far more engrossing. Secondly, a passionless relationship that inevitably fails because of reasons clearly spelled out for us just isn't very interesting to me. The Passion of Anna is a film that just wouldn't let me in. 
The narration, the interludes with the actors talking about their roles, which were frustrating for removing the sense of realism, the uninteresting main relationship, and the huge amounts of exposition kept pulling me out of the experience, and left me with a rather uninvolving film. Even with the, as usual, terrific performances, gorgeous cinematography, and some compelling subplots. I don't know, The Passion of Anna just didn't work for me, and is my least favorite Bergman film so far. The Passion of Anna earns three stars out of five. Thanks for watching. Cheers.